Hello community. Sometimes YouTube gets me. Look at this video. This is a recommendation by YouTube. Meta's new AI tool LLM outperforms every AI so far. Or look at this video here. Microsoft Meta introducing tool LLM. This AI is 10 times more powerful than Gorilla. Or look at this. Tool LLM beats GPT-4. The App Store for LLMs. And yes, I have to confess, I like Gorilla, so I was interested in this. And think about it. Meta's AI tool outperforms every AI so far. Everything is better. So I ask, hey, are we now in the era of M&M, Meta and Microsoft, the new dominant player in technology? So I did something for my younger viewers, you know, we call this Google, yeah, you put this in here, a search bar, and you say tool, LLM archive, no, I did not watch this video, because I know never watch a YouTube video just for the title, so I wanted to have here the research paper, and here it is, July 31st, 2023, and you know what, it is not by Meta, and it is not by Microsoft. It is, if you look at this, by Tsinghua University, Model Best, Renmin University of China, Yale University, WeChat, and Tihu Incorporated. Interesting, I thought. Could it be that the title of a YouTube video was not 110% correct? Unbelievable, you're gonna say. So I had a look at the abstract, and to make it short, here on the right hand side, you have an abstract. They argue, the authors of the paper argue that LAMA models are significantly limited in performing higher level tasks, like example, using external tools, like for example, APIs. This is in stark contrast to the state of the art LLMs like ChatGPT. So not even GPT-4, but ChatGPT, which have demonstrated excellent tool use capability. And the authors argue so to facilitate the tool use capability. Now, within the open source LLM, so for the Llama model, they introduce tool LLM. So suddenly we are faced with a completely different scenario. So they write the tool bench. This is an instruction tuning, a fine tuning data set for the task of tool use. And our tool will be an API call. And this tool bench dataset is created automatically using ChatGPT. So suddenly, how can it be better than GPT-4 if it's based on ChatGPT, if ChatGPT creates the dataset for the fine tuning? And the author says, so we prompt ChatGPT <laughs> to generate diverse human instruction involving those APIs for single tool and multi-tool scenarios. And I will explain this in a second, what is a multi-tool scenario. And then they use JetGPT to search for a valid solution path for each instructions data set they have in their new tool use capability data set. So you see, the reality is completely different. Okay. And they say, and then when we have this data set, we find you now a Llama model here on our new Toolbench data set to obtain da -da -da -da, Tool Llama. And you're not going to believe this. The author state, after we have done everything to extract the information from ChatGPT, use the ChatGPT prompts to generate the data set, use ChatGPT to search here for the solution path here on our tools for each extraction, then the fine-tuned model that we have trained here with this ChatGPT data exhibit a comparable performance to ChatGPT. Isn't this impressive? So now we know what the authors of the paper really did. Okay, I thought, okay, if I've read the abstract, I read the paper. What they used as their central data source as their database, as their data lake, as their, how is it called? Rapid API directory, the world's largest API directory. They use this data. And I think we should notice this. This is here, the data source, Rapid API Hub. Discover and connect thousands of API. 
And look, we have here the top baseball APIs, the top translation APIs, the top movie APIs, and finally, the most important, the top weather APIs, the movie database, the baseball database. We have gaming, weather, events, health and fitness, location, entertainment, finance, sport. So we have really a lot of APIs. And what the authors of Tool LM did, they collected from this data set quite a lot of representational state transfer REST APIs. So they just, just collected here the REST APIs from this data source. Great. So now in general, and this is an oversimplification to make it easy for you. If we have this data source here, or this API directory, or we have it in SQL or in NoSQL. Let's just call it a data repository or a database if you are from the older generation. How can we have the data in a database to get some fine tuning data sets so we can here move from a database to an LLM? Well, easy. We just need to create out of the data of our database an instruction fine tuning data set where we can then use our base model, like a Llama model, with this fine-tuning data set, and we get then the desired LLM. But how we do this transfer? You're not gonna believe, we ask here, ChatGPT. ChatGPT now writes, automate here, an instruction-based data set, given that it extracts here the data from the data source. So we have here the form of a tuplet, and we have an instruction and an outcome. What is the simplest form? The instruction, get the current weather in San Francisco. We have a lot of weather APIs from San Francisco, from London, from whatever. You get the idea. So we have our parameter San Francisco, we use some metric units, so degree Celsius and not degree Fahrenheit. And then we have here a description here, call the weather API with the city and the units parameter, get the response from the API, and you get the idea what is here our instruction and outcome set. And if we have this, and we do this for a lot of data, we created, we, JetGPT created, <laughs> based on the data here, an instruction fine-tuning data set. And you're not going to believe it. If we now take here an open source, which is not open source, but never mind, a base model Llama and use here this instruction fine tuning data set, and we fine tune now any Llama model on this, this is exactly what we get our tool Llama. So, what we get is an LLM that it has a specific tool functionality that is focused on API. Use API as a tool. And you're not going to believe it, the performance of this tool is comparable to ChatGPT. You never guessed this. However, if you have a look at the data, there are some interesting details. They create a tool bench data set. And this is kind of an interesting part. So what we have, we have the API collection, as I showed you. Then ChatGPT does the instruction generation I showed you. Now, new is here the solution path annotation. And as the authors of the paper write, the whole procedure is finished purely using ChatGPT. And here the 16K token length version, this is great. And the whole process requires minimal human supervision. So we extract everything out of ChatGPT. ChatGPT is how here our central intelligence to create here our data set from three stages. How do you do this now? The solution path. And when I say solution path, you think about decision trees. And you know, decision trees, there are a dozen of methodologies how to follow a decision tree. And the authors go here for adapt first. Beautiful. Now they say this serves as a general decision making strategy to enhance the reasoning capability of LLMs which is an interesting statement by itself. And they say this achieves significantly better performance than, for example, React, which is an interesting statement, as I already told you. And they say, by the way, we prompt ChatGPT. What a coincidence. They use ChatGPT another time as the central intelligence to create even more specialized data. 
they use here a simple retriever. And the retriever recommends a set of relevant APIs, which are sent then to the tool Llama for a multi-round decision making to derive the final answer. Now, sounds complicated. Let me show you what it is. The argument is you have multiple different ways to proceed or to be more marketing. You have to evaluate multiple reasoning traces. This means that the LLM can explore a different path down the decision tree and find the best solution path. So what is the task? Now let's say the task is for trace one and trace two the same. Is the user asking for the weather forecast for tomorrow? Great. So in our directory of all the different APIs, you have a lot of possible ways to get the weather for tomorrow. For example, you can use the Google Search API, or you use the weather or the Open Weather Map API, or you use a, I don't know Weather Station San Francisco API. So you see, you have a lot of possible path to the solution. And now the decision tree, depth first algorithm would evaluate now all the different reasoning traces, the different way to use different APIs and choose the one that is most likely to lead to the correct solution, of course, based on the training data that we provided. So whatever is in this API directory, what's the name? I forgot the name. That's not acceptable that I forget the name. Rapid API Hub. So whatever there is, this is now based here, or this creates now the intelligence for our tool LLM. Wait. So here we are. If you want to see this in a node, an expanded node example, here you have now this new algorithm decision tree for the task of making, for example, complex reservation at a restaurant, Yelp or whatever you have. So we have a root node. Is the user making a reservation for today? And now the most simple case can be yes or no, binary decision. So yes, go to node one, expand node one. No, you go to node two. So let's follow now, yes, node one. So we expand node one. What time does the user want to make the reservation for? Now, you're not gonna believe it, but if it's 6 p.m., eh, there is a significant increase in probability at around six to 7 p.m. for the humans. The instruction is go to node number three. Then we go to node number three, we expand node number three and call the restaurant to make a reservation or send an email or whatever is the action. If not, we go to node number four. So you see, this is simple, whatever we know here as here a decision tree that's simply done here for an API. Now you might say, okay, so what is the overall performance of this thing? And here we are now at the final chart and here we have here our two contestants. We have here ChatGPT with the decision tree. And we have here now the tool Llama, Llama model trained here on the data that ChatGPT extracted from us from this particular API data source. And you see, given the win rate, we almost equal now the tool Llama with the ChatGPT, but with the pass rate, ChatGPT is still better. So what a coincidence, after we use ChatGPT for almost every step down here, the solution path, we have now created a similar model based here on a Llama open source model, semi open source model, if you want. And okay, we have now this tool Llama. And now the augmentation of the order is now we have an open source model that is almost as performance as a closed source model like ChatGPT. Now remember there's GPT-4, which is outside of the scope of this graph area here, but just to make sure what we are talking about when we talk about tool LLMs or tool llamas, what it is. So, so coming back to our original intentional YouTube titles here. Meta's new AI tool LLM outperforms every AI so far. Now we know exactly what tool LLM can do. 
Now with the second year, Microsoft and Meta introducing tool LLM. Now we know exactly about the authorship of this tool LLM. And regarding here the sentence, the tool LLM beats GPT-4, we now understand the tool LLM was used by an instruction data set completely automatically created by ChatGPT. And the overall performance comes close to ChatGPT for the specific task of tools for API calls, but tool LLM is not able to beat ChatGPT. So not to mention GPT-4. I hope it was informative for you and it would be great to see you in my next videos.